This video is the third of a six-part series that aims to provide an overview of wastewater operations at meat processing plants and guidance on their day-to-day -day management. In this video, we will be exploring the anaerobic treatment of wastewater. Anaerobic ponds play an important role in the treatment of meat processing wastewater. Their key function is to reduce the level of organic contaminants and, to a lesser extent, oil and grease in large volumes of wastewater. They have little effect on the removal of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus or on pathogen numbers. Anaerobic ponds are living ecosystems that contain a complex mix of bacteria that break down organic substances in the wastewater from meat processing plants. This occurs in a three-stage process. In the first phase, enzymes excreted from bacteria break down fats, proteins and carbohydrates in the wastewater into simpler water-soluble organics such as sugars, amino acids and fatty acids. In the second stage, acid-forming bacteria convert these simple soluble organics into carbon dioxide, hydrogen and volatile acids including acetic acid and alcohol. In this phase, intermediate bacteria also convert some of the volatile acids and alcohol produced by the acid-forming bacteria into hydrogen, carbon dioxide and acetic acid. In the third and final stage, methane-forming bacteria convert the hydrogen and acetic acid formed by the acid formers to methane gas and carbon dioxide. Methane-forming bacteria are more sensitive to their environment than acid-forming bacteria. Thus, the lagoons must be operated to favour the methagenes, including an oxygen-free environment, a uniform food source of simple organic acids, and a pH between 6.6 .6 and 7.6. There are four important things to understand about anaerobic ponds. Firstly, anaerobic ponds work entirely in the absence of oxygen. Oxygen is toxic to methogens that generate most of the gas. Because oxygen does not need to be added to the ponds, it makes them very cost effective to operate. However, without oxygen, these ponds produce a number of unpleasant smelling byproducts, including ammonia and hydrogen sulfide, which has a rotten egg smell and is a toxic gas. Consequently, offensive odours can be a problem with anaerobic ponds. No supplement can be added to prevent this without killing the bacteria in the pond. Secondly, anaerobic ponds generate much less sludge per tonne of incoming organic load than aerobic treatment systems. Consequently, there is a lot less sludge to deal with at the end of the process. Despite this, anaerobic ponds may fill with solids rapidly if primary treatment is poor. Thirdly, anaerobic ponds generate large quantities of methane, which is an energy-rich fuel. Methane can have a very detrimental effect on climate change, as it is 21 times worse at warming the atmosphere than an equal amount of carbon dioxide. However, if captured, it can be used for boiler fuel or for making electricity in gas engines. Finally, if the anaerobic pond fails for any reason, the performance of the entire downstream pond system will collapse and produce non-compliant final wastewater. The traditional anaerobic pond operating in the meat processing industry is a deep basin, usually at least three metres, which develops a floating crust over time, consisting of a mixture of fats and cellular material. This natural crust is considered to play a positive role for the pond in that it insulates the pond contents and helps maintain the pond at high temperatures during cold winter months helps minimise odour emissions off the pond and minimises oxygen entry into the pond through the water surface. Over the last decade, anaerobic ponds have been designed with a synthetic geomembrane which seal the pond from the atmosphere and allow the capture of the biogas. The main advantage of CALS is that while the cover makes little difference to the treatment performance of the pond, biogas can be captured either for flaring or for other uses such as cogeneration or boiler fuel. This reduces the meat processing plant's impact on global warming, reduces fuel costs and odour emissions are better controlled. The downside of cows is their greater cost, usually about double that of naturally crusted ponds. An alternative to the earth dam structures is a suitably constructed tank or vessel where the anaerobic reaction can be contained and mixing can be provided. However, due to the much higher cost of tanks relative to dams, this option has limited application in smaller plants.
Mm. Site-specific regulatory requirements concerning anaerobic ponds will be stated in the plant's environmental protection licence, permit or approval, which is issued by state government. Probably the most common requirement is for the pond to have a certain freeboard to prevent overflows. Methane emissions from anaerobic ponds is an important issue for meat processing plants, with some sites required to report emissions from their anaerobic ponds under the National Greenhouse and Energy Reporting System. For cows, an additional layer of regulatory impact arises from the capture and use of the biogas. This involves compliance issues relating to various state-based agencies concerned with odour emission requirements, gas equipment manufacture and operation requirements and climate change impacts. There may be other compliance issues with flare operation, such as light or noise emissions. Finally, there are significant health and safety concerns with anaerobic ponds, whether naturally covered or as cows. These concerns relate to the potentially toxic nature of gases produced, in particular hydrogen sulphide and the flammable or suffocating nature of biogas. Personnel working on or near biogas capture, storage or combustion technology should refer to AMPC's Biogas Capture, Storage and Combustion Manual and associated training material for guidance on operator safety. Anaerobic ponds should be checked regularly, preferably at least weekly. Inspections should include checking the pond inlet and outlet are clear and not blocked. For naturally crusted ponds, you also need to check that the pond crust has not disappeared on any part of the pond or it has not changed. A good method is to take a photo of the crust from a given point once a month and check the latest image against older ones. If the crust is disappearing, odour emissions may become an issue with neighbours. The pond bank should also be checked to ensure they have not been damaged by the roots of vegetation. Any emerging trees or shrubs should be killed immediately. Pond crust can grow a large variety of plant life, including reeds and grasses. However, trees and shrubs need to be removed. Always resist the temptation to burn vegetation off anaerobic ponds due to the presence of methane and the risk of an explosion. If any severe rainfall erosion is observed, it may pay to apply protective biodegradable matting which allows grass growth. It is also important to look for any activity of burrowing animals such as wombats, rabbits, reptiles. If found, removal is recommended. Regular inspection of cows is critical. There are a number of things to look out for, including any leaks from the cover. So the way we manage leaks on the plant and daily inspection, I would uh, take the gas detector with me. It's a handheld device. I would turn that on before I arrive at the uh, cow and a combustible gas detector and that would be for finer cracks in the concrete wall of the pond. Stormwater also needs to be managed. Excess stormwater on the cover causes contact between the wastewater and the cover and can hamper the collection of the gas by impeding flows. While removing stormwater, the operation of the stormwater removal pumps should also be checked. When we have water on the, on the um, covered anaerobic lagoon, we can manage it in two ways. We've got the, the stormwater pumps, which are manually operated, it's just a visual check. The other thing is we have a, an alarm system. They, in the middle of the night we get a lot of rain, the pressure goes up, an alarm will come through to me on the phone, then I'll come in and just operate the pumps. Operators should also look out for overinflation of the cover. Overinflation can result in the ventilation of gas and mechanical stress from wind which may damage it. If overinflation occurs, it is important to ensure the emergency release valves are not blocked. First of all, we've got a, a coal vent which is the last resort that will vent it over a certain pressure. But we're always proactive with burning the gas in the boiler and there's a, a flare which will cut in on the weekends if needed to be and it's tested regularly, once a month at least. The build-up of the crust under the cover, which can be damaging, can be observed through the inspection ports when the cover area around the port is at water level. Operators should also ensure the perimeter of the cowl is free from vegetation. The, the cover is, is pretty safe really. There is buffers there, there's road right around it. We make sure that it's clean, mowed, weeds are gone. There's a fence there as well and the paddocks around the cow are used for grazing the cattle so they're always fairly short and we do have a, a small little firefighting trailer if, if there is a, a small spot fire. Outlet sampling and testing of anaerobic ponds on a regular basis is recommended. If intensive treatment systems follow the anaerobic pond downstream, such as activated sludge systems or discharge to sewer, this sampling should be conducted as often as weekly.
If the treated water flows to facultative ponds or is disposed to land, the frequency may be relaxed to once each month or quarterly. AMPC's Wastewater Management Manual provides details on critical parameter and preferred ranges. I go to the Cal Inlet, by that time the sun's up, I do two readings there, I do a temperature reading and a pH reading. Continue my circle around the cowl, checking for leaks, water on the cover. Do the cowl out, same thing, temperature, pH. So this makes sure that we get enough flows out, level of the cowl. I go back to the office and enter all that into the computers. Anaerobic ponds are living organisms, so it is essential operators look out for dysfunctional activity. In the case of naturally crusted ponds, operators should look out for crust foaming. This is where the crust develops a foam that often starts in one area and expands quickly. The foam can flow over the pond walls and off-site under extreme conditions. If you observe a foaming crust, immediately call for specialist assistance. Volcano-like gas geysers can also form, often near the inlet end. These bubble constantly as gas escapes the pond through them. A small number of such geysers is not detrimental. However, if they spread across more than about a fifth of the pond service, it may indicate the pond is overloaded. Seek help or divert some flow to other ponds if possible. Operators should also seek assistance if excessive solids build in the outlet discharge, as this may indicate a sludge buildup in the pond. Covered anaerobic ponds are also vulnerable to foaming and excess solids in the effluent. Equipment to measure biogas flow, however, can provide valuable monitoring information. When gas production slows, or even worse, stops, the anaerobic bacteria are either under extreme stress or have partially died off. Seek help immediately, as continued operation may cause more damage to the delicate bacterial population. The role of the supervisor is very important. They should review monitoring data to observe trends with time. Due to the large volume and long residence times of water in the lagoon, problems with anaerobic ponds emerge gradually over months rather than days or hours. Therefore, hopefully if a problem is identified quickly, it can be resolved before it becomes a non-compliance issue. Supervisors will also need to anticipate the impacts of sustained or temporary increases or decreases in production on the operation of anaerobic ponds and, when needed, obtain specialist advice on these impacts. Finally, supervisors may need to promote maintenance expenditure as required.